Bismillah, alhamdulillah, peace be with you. Those are greetings of peace, the best greetings, and we are greeting you with it. And our next guest from punk rock. I'm talking about, you know, that's that stuff that you get a guitar and you bob your head and you just, you know, <laughs> lose your mind. This guy went from punk rock to this way of life that brings peace, happiness, contentment. You live in the purpose of life. You know why you're here. You know when you're going, when you die. We're going to hear his story here on The Dean Show, so don't go nowhere. This is the Dean, the Dean Show. This is 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 the Dean Show. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum assalam wa Greetings of peace. Jazakallah khair. How are you? Yeah, well, thank you very much for. I know it's your interview, but I'm asking you, how are you? Alhamdulillah, <laughs> praise to the Creator of the heavens and the earth. I, I, you won't find. I tell the people, you won't find a group of people who are more ecstatic about praising God, isn't exactly. it? You ask a True. Muslim, he can have the worst day in his life. He's like, Alhamdulillah. Exactly. All praise to the Creator. Exactly. Is that right? That's absolutely true. Amen. Alhamdulillah. <laughs> Alhamdulillah. So you have a very <clears throat> interesting story. Sad. Uh, I do. I do actually. You graduated from Medina? I recently graduated about a year ago. Mm -hmm. uh, graduated from the University of Medina. Yes. Yeah. Now I know we don't go into, we, 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 we dread a lot of the things from our past, mm -hmm. but a lot of times we speak about it to relate to the people so right. we can say look I've been there done that that doesn't yeah. bring happiness it brings misery yeah used to be in a punk rock band used to love music <laughs> did you wake up to it mm, yeah I think I did slept I did. to it yeah I definitely slept to it that was yeah. like the shaitan's Quran right definitely. definitely talk to us about it what happened okay before I tell you before, anything, go ahead. before I tell you anything I've actually never really told this story publicly so We're if you're, honored if you're watching this uh, you're the first time, it's the first time I'm telling it publicly. Only on the Dean Show, so you're getting it here. Only on the Dean Show. Allah Akbar. <laughs> okay, so basically my story, like, it, it's very similar to a lot of kids who grew up in America, went to public school. Uh, in high school, basically, just forward to high school, uh, I started a band. Um, it's a punk rock band, uh, I like punk rock music. You were the lead singer. I was the, I don't know if you'd call it singing, uh, punk rock, so, you know, it's not really singing. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I did, I did lead vocals. Guitar? Uh, no, not really. Okay. Uh, just, just lead vocals. Did lead vocals. Uh, my band was, you know, it was pretty political. So I, I kind of, in the back of my mind, I, I felt like I was doing something good, because uh, it was political and I spoke about real issues and stuff like that, as opposed to like pop music and stuff like that. For me, it was like, you know, I'm speaking about political issues, people who are oppressed and stuff like that. So I felt like I'm doing something good. So yeah, that's where it started. I was in a punk rock band. Uh, it lasted throughout high school. Uh, when I went to college, uh, that's when things began to change for me. Uh, when I went to college, I had a couple experiences in my life. People started asking me, my brother started asking me about life. And it's the first time I actually began to question what my life was about. So I began thinking about the purpose of my life, what it's all for. And it's actually one experience I had. You know, how, people, how old were you at this, at this um, time? This was at the uh, beginning of college, so I'd say about 18. You were 18. Uh, 17, 18, around that age. It's, it's been a while, so. Mm -hmm. Now, at 18, you're thinking about purpose of life. Yeah, so the thing with me was uh, I would write lyrics for the band. Uh, I, was, I, I thought of myself as somebody who was spiritual to begin with. Uh, I try to think deeper because, you know, if you're a poet or a lyricist, you know, you, t you tend to think uh, deeply about stuff. So even when writing lyrics and stuff like that, I tried to uh, stay away from the cliches and you know write about real issues. So I would always I ha kind of had that spiritual side, but I never took it all the way where I actually asked myself like, what's the purpose of my life? And it's only when people started to ask me and question me, Muslims, there's Muslims making da'wah to me. By the way, I don't even really consider myself Muslim before uh, I started practicing Islam because I didn't pray. Uh, I never really even thought about God, so I'm not even sure if I really believed in God. Did your parents bring you up as a Muslim? I was brought up as a Muslim. I was in a Muslim household, but you know the way my parents were, they never really forced religion upon us. Uh, were they practicing praying five times they, a day? Not, or they, or well, was it more cultural? It was, it was more cultural. Uh, it, nobody was really that practicing. The first person to start practicing Islam was actually my brother. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and, he, were, and the rituals mm -hmm. that they did, you know, a lot of times, you know, Muslims will come out, they don't even know what they're saying, they don't yeah. even know the meaning behind it. It was more yeah. kind of like that. It was actually like that. You know, I would say, Assalamu Alaikum, 
Um, I would say inshallah. I don't, I don't you even know, know what that meant. I don't even know if I said inshallah, to be honest. Yeah. <laughs> now that I think about it, you know, it's just something you say. This is very common, isn't it? Yeah, it is pretty common. It is pretty common. I remember uh, I'd pray on Eid, uh, pray Jummah, maybe Ramadan, sometimes. Ramadan Muslim? Yeah, Ramadan you'd fast, but you kind of like just something you do, right? Yeah. Like you don't know really why you're doing it, but it's just, I think most people think it's part of their culture. Mm -hmm. you know, it's part of your culture, it's just something you do. So that's how it was for me. I just didn't really even think about it. It wasn't like, you know, I didn't want to be Muslim or anything like that. I just did, I didn't think about it. I didn't care. You know, just too busy in trying to get the most out of this life. And that's what really caught me, is when people started asking me, or my brother actually, he, he's the first person to start practicing in my house. And he would ask me, he'd ask me these deep questions that I really needed to think about. Like and what? What were these deep questions? Like, for example, what's going to happen after you die? Right? And the average person doesn't think about death. And I remember till now, I'm, I was making da'wah too, this is after I started practicing. A friend of mine, uh, from before I started practicing, and I asked him, I said, I said, do you think about death? Like, what's going to happen? I asked him the same question. What's going to happen after you die? He's like, listen, don't talk about, about death. That's too morbid. Like, I don't want to think about that stuff. I just want to enjoy life and have fun. And that's how I was too. You know, I was like, listen, I don't, I still remember people ask me, I'd be like, listen, I don't, I just want to do my thing. You know, I just want to have fun, enjoy life. You're ruining Man. the high now. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And the problem was, I, at that point, I did believe that this life did contain everything. Right? And it's only when I came to the realization that this life does not contain anything. And that for me happened at a particular moment. It happened at a time that I went to a concert. Yeah, and I'll tell you about that. You went to a concert? I went to a concert and something happened there, which was, I would say, the, 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 one of the turning points for me. Now before we go to break, tell yeah. us, so were you contempt? Were you happy from a young age now, you're going to public, you went to public school? Yeah, I went to public school. From there you went to high school? Yeah. And your friends, they were just doing the same thing, obviously? Yeah. Were I mean, you it, trying to fit in? Mm -hmm. Were you the popular guy? Or you were looking up to someone? <clears throat> you were trying to be, who were you identifying with? Okay, so here's the thing. Uh, in, in middle school, I wasn't that popular. And when I went to high school, uh, I began to find a little bit of an identity. I read the autobiography of Malcolm X. And I was like, you know what? There's something to this Islam thing. And I began to build an identity as like, um, you know, I was, I was proud, like, a, a, like a, I was proud to be rebellious. And like, I wrote that in my music, you know, and that kind of, that did make me popular. You know, and then being in a band, uh, that helped my popularity. What, but what, but right. it stopped there. I, I used it for the means of just being popular and, you know, having a good time instead of taking it a step further. Why, why punk? It's punk rock. It's punk, well, it, it's rock. Rock? It's rock. What's the difference between rock and punk rock? Uh, there's different types of rock. There's, there's heavy metal. Uh, punk rock, you know, there's, <laughs> there's soft rock, there's classic rock. Did you also um, get into a little R&B, hip-hop, any of these? Actually, up? I wasn't really into R&B. No, not, not really. The only thing that I listened to, I listened to a little bit of uh, underground rap. Because it was political, yeah. uh, they were talking about real issues, social issues. So a little bit of underground uh, rap. I don't want to throw out some names. <laughs> this really but, takes over your mind, your life, music, doesn't yeah, it? Yeah, pretty much. I mean, at that point, I had a bumper sticker on my car. Uh -huh. It said, I love music. Uh -huh. Right. So basically, I wanted people to know that if you don't know me, the one thing you can know about me is that I love music. It becomes like a way of li a religion. It really is. You it, know, the it, celebrities, yeah. they're, the, these, they're the people that you're mimicking. You want yeah, to be like. And it's like, I remember the people that I used to look up to, like the person that I wanted to be were people who were celebrities. You know, people who, um, celebrities in terms of music, they were musicians and they were yeah. rock stars or punk rock stars. Okay, we got yeah. more to talk about here on the Dean Show. The concert. Yeah, we I gotta tell you about the concert. We gotta talk about some of these celebrities here on the Dean Show. From punk rock to true purpose, purpose in life. We'll be right back. And it's simple to understand. I wouldn't know what the sky looked like, what the trees looked like. I would have never seen the faces of my beautiful children if I didn't have the ability to see. How blessed we are by Allah. And obedience is born out of gratitude. So thank him, call upon him, establish a relationship with him, forget about the past. Take it out of being a ritual and make it a spiritual experience. Islam is not something dubious, unclear, hazy. It's really straightforward. He said it changed his life. He said he saw every single episode that you had ever recorded. Back here on the Dean Show with Sheikh Saad, and you are presently also a 
instructor with El Maghrib. Yeah, I'm Is one right? of the I'm the latest instructor for El Maghrib Institute. We're going to get correct. into that a little bit mm -hmm. later, but now people want to know like celebrities, okay? Most of the people today they have a favorite celebrity. Yeah. You know, if that celebrity cuts their hair a certain way, they yeah. cut their hair a certain way, they yeah. add, they you know, they raise up the skirt this way, they do the same thing. Yeah. Did you have certain uh, pop stars, rock stars that you were emulating? Well, you honestly, it like? was it was Would you scream like I mean if, if is there someone that you met or if you wanted to meet that you just go crazy for? I, I mean I wasn't into pop stars, obviously. It's ridiculous now that we no, look no, at it. No, it's, no, it's not. Like, I wasn't into pop stars. Uh, I wouldn't scream, stuff like that. Aerosmith. I, I don't no, know. If you I, saw, if you met Aeros that, Bon Jovi. <laughs> that was before my day. Oh. That, was, that was before my day. <laughs> hey, we get, <laughs> don't get old. Who were the guys at that time? Um, I, I'll tell you about one of my favorite bands. And like I said, this is exclusively for you. I, I haven't really told anyone about uh -huh. this. Uh, Rage Against the Machine. Uh, I don't well, know. If you probably, heard have you heard of them? Of them? Yeah. Rage uh, Against the Machine. Rage Against the Machine. They're one of my favorite bands because they were political, they talked about real issues, and I felt like this is the type of music that can make a difference. You know, so I felt like there was substance to it. I didn't like pop music because I felt like there's no substance to yeah. it, right? So I enjoyed punk rock, and you know, a lot of punk rock bands, even rock bands, they do talk about political, social issues. Yeah. Rage Against the Machine was one of those bands. Mm -hmm. And yeah, I did look up to them. Yeah. You know, the lead singer, I would say, was one of the people that I really looked up to. Yeah. Now, yeah. now you were there. You've been there, done that. Now you're at this concert. Yeah. What, what happened at the concert? Basically, this is, I would say, one of the turning points in my life. Because people ask me, like, was there, a, was there one moment that really stands out? This is the moment, I would say, although it did take time, but this was the one moment that, that really stood out. I went to a concert, and at this concert, I remember till this day, there was uh, floor seating, and there was, like, balcony seating in the back. Uh, so people on the balcony, they can look down on the crowd. And, and the band, and I was sitting on, on, on the, the floor seating, the ground seating, and the band came on, everybody started playing, the band started playing, everybody was having fun, everybody was having a good time, and I just paused for a moment, and I have this feeling, and I don't want to say it's an outer body experience, right? I just want to say that I could feel like, it's almost like I could look down upon what's happening, I could look down on the situation. So it's almost like I was sitting up on the balcony. I'm sitting on the balcony, and I look down, and I see myself, I see everyone there, everyone just like dancing, <laughs> rocking out to the music. And I'm like, is this it? Like, is this my life? Mm -hmm. Like, is that, is that the purpose of my life? Is just to try to maximize my fun? Now people here are the scene, if we can paint the picture, the visual, people are yeah. just bobbing their heads from side to uh, side. It's drugs, more, <laughs> they're like a drunk, uh, you Yeah, know. people are drunk it, at these it, concerts. It just, it's like it's, zombies now. Uh, it's like zombies, people, yeah, people, that's the other thing. And now you, you're actually yeah. having an epiphany now. You're having yeah. your moment, you're just yeah. like. It was like, it was a moment of clarity. Yeah. Uh -huh. it, was that, it was that one moment of clarity that I had where. Through all this. Um, through all this chaos, This yeah. chaos, yeah. you're thinking serious. Yeah, it, it, it became serious at that moment. I, I could look down and I, I could see it. And that really affected me to the point where my friend sitting next to me, uh, she says to me, she oh, says, she? Yeah, was she. Was she trying to pass you something? Uh, no, no, she wasn't passing me anything. Okay. She wasn't passing me anything. But she says to me, she noticed, she said, is everything okay? Like she saw, I mean, the color of my face changed. Yes. Like it, obviously it affected me. And I was like, yeah, yeah, I'm fine. And I was like, listen, I just, I gotta go. Like I can't be here right now. Like I know this is not good for me. I left. I uh, got in my car and I drove that night. Remember, I drove for hours just thinking about life. And one of the things I asked myself was, where am I headed? So I plotted out my life and I said, let's say everything in my life goes as planned, right? Which never happens anyway, right? Like, you, just, you don't always get what you want, but I said, let's say, best case scenario, I get what I want. Uh, my band, uh, we got a record deal, which, I mean, bands don't really get record deals. It's really, really um, yeah. rare that a band gets a record deal. But, but that, was, that was your dream. Yeah, that's the dream, right? So I was like, my band gets a record deal, we get signed, uh, we tour, uh, become rich and famous, mm -hmm. right? I, I spend my life doing what I like doing, doing music, playing music. And then I'm like, I fast forward, I'm like, okay, let me fast forward a couple years, five years, 10 years, 20 years, 30 years. Then I'm like, then what? Right? And I'm like, okay, now I'm sitting on my deathbed. Then what? What did I just spend my life doing? Right? There's got to be more to life than this fun. Right? And then the other thing I was like... Are you like, still 18 now or are you 19? Uh, I'm, I'm a little bit older a little at this older, point. Okay. Yeah, it's, it's been a year or two after that. You're, uh, fairly, you're young. Yeah, you're I am young. And that's, you know, I was pretty mature for my age. Like I said, I did write and I wrote poetry. I, I, um, I wrote lyrics for the band. Yeah. 
So I, I did think about these type of things. So at that at that time, I, I thought to myself, I said, even this life, even the life that I'm chasing, I know it's not perfect, because I've been to concerts, I've been to parties, I've I've had the fun that you can have, and it just didn't. It wasn't fulfilling, right? So I was like, if I if I spend my whole life doing this, it's not going to all of a sudden become fulfilling, right? So that. I look back at my life and I'm like, is that a wasted life? And it seemed like a wasted life. And I said, you know what? I need to figure out what my life is really about because it's not definitely not this. It's definitely not chasing this life and just trying to have fun. That can't be the purpose of my life. And that's where I started my journey. Now the journey begins. Yeah, the journey began the at that time. The serious journey. That's when I became serious. That's when I was like, you know what? I know happiness does not lie in chasing the dunya. I, that, I, that much I had figured out at that point. So what happens from here? From there, uh, I begin looking at religions and spirituality and you know one of the things about as a young person you tend to rebel against those things that are around you so I rebelled against the, the religion of my family which is Islam so I'm like obviously that can't be the truth so that's the last place I look for the truth yeah, yeah. so uh, you started did you get into Christianity yeah I looked into uh, Christianity. Buddhism, Hinduism yep. Yep. I looked at, looked into not Hinduism <laughs> but uh, Buddhism uh, Christianity I had a Jewish friend to talk to him uh, for a moment there, I was like, maybe you just have to be spiritual, right? And that didn't make sense. And I remember I would always have these questions, right? Because I was like, if I'm going to change my life, it has to be logical, it has to make sense, and I have to be completely comfortable with it. Mm -hmm. And I remember talking to like my Christian friends and talking to my Jewish friends, talking to Buddhists, even talking to people who are just like, listen, you just got to be a good person, it doesn't matter, you know, just, just be good. And I realized that I always had issues, like it was never, I always had questions that they couldn't answer, right? And obviously with, with other religions and stuff like that, the questions like when it comes to Christianity, for example, the whole Trinity business and all that, like it never made sense to me. And coming from the outside, uh, it really didn't make sense to me. Like I just wasn't convinced. Yeah. And nothing convinced me until I finally, finally went to my brother. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, okay, tell me about Islam. Let's do this. I have questions for you. You, let's see if you can answer them. What were some of these questions? Some of these questions were some of the questions were about um, why do I have to worship God to make it make it to paradise, right? Things like that. Questions of uh, predestination, for example. Like if God has decided everything uh, ahead of time, if God knows what's going to happen, then what's the point of me uh, doing anything? If it's already, questions like that, which uh, I didn't know back then, but now I know. There's clear answers in Islam. Islam didn't provide you anything yeah. ambiguous. Yeah, there's nothing so. ambiguous. Uh, everything, may, even like you take the most taboo subjects, right? You take polygamy, you take, um, you know, cutting people's hands off when they steal and stuff like that. If you look at it in context, and if you look at, if you look at the, the spirit of Islam, you'll see it's the most just way, right? And that is, at that point, when, I, when those questions were answered for me, there came a point where I was like, I don't have any more questions. Was everything explained to a, Every, an understanding now that look, a, a, a young adult such as yourself, yeah. it was clear, it was lucid, purpose of life, the purpose of where life, you yeah. go when you die, yeah. what you need to be doing here, yeah. everything you know, was explained, the and the evidence, because yeah. look, many people say, look, exactly. uh, uh, religion is a personal choice, you just have that faith. You just got to believe. You just got to believe. Was yeah. it one of those? It wasn't. Uh, that's, the, that's what I heard from other religions. And when it came to Islam, uh, my brother didn't tell me, or even the other people that I was talking to, they didn't tell me, listen, I can't explain this to you, you just got to believe. Because that's a no-no for me. At that point, I'm like, peace out, I don't have nothing to do with this. Right? When it came to Islam, they would answer my questions, and they would explain it to me, and it would make sense. So there came a point in my life, at that point, where I, was, I said to myself, I remember clearly I said to myself, if I do not become Muslim right now, it's because I'm rejecting the truth. Because I know it to be true, and my heart is comfortable with it. Because that's the thing about Tawheed, about worshiping Allah alone, is that your heart is comfortable with that concept because that's part of our fitrah, that's part of our, our nature, is to accept Tawheed. So at that moment, I realized that my heart accepts this. It's, it's, it's pure. And if I still don't do it, it's because I'm rejecting the truth. And at that point, it was a matter of, it's like, to, to people outside, it seemed like a single day that I changed. It wasn't a single day. But it was a single day that I made that decision to say, you know what? I think it's time to submit. Do you have peace now? Are you happy? Yeah. Are alhamdulillah, you content? Alhamdulillah. If someone wrote you a check right now that said, you know, <laughs> here's a million dollars contract. Come and be the lead singer for this bad band. Would you take it? I wouldn't do it. I wouldn't do it. You know why I wouldn't do it? 
because I know it's an empty life. I know it's an empty life. And I, and I know, I mean, a lot of times the problem with the youth is they don't understand that money and, and, and fame and that kind of stuff, it, it's not fulfilling. It's not right? fulfilling. And one of the problems is a lot of kids, they don't have it. They just see other people who have it and they see them on TV and they see them on the internet and stuff like this and they look at their lives and they assume it looks like their lives are amazing. Their lives are not amazing. How many rock stars have committed suicide? One of my favorite rock stars, uh, Kurt Cobain from Nirvana. Nirvana, I was just thinking that. Yeah, he committed suicide. I couldn't, I couldn't believe it. Let's right? hold it right there. We're going to yeah. take a break and we're right. going gonna to pick up right there. Suicide, celebrities, why are they doing it? If they have all the money and the fame, we'll be right back here on The Dean Show. This is my family. Eddie has always been stubborn. He started having his problems, gang activity, fights. One night, policemen called me, say, you, Eddie's uh, father, come on, get him from the station. He, he's locked up. One fight here, another fight there. His physical being was great for his ego, but it left him empty. If someone who knew Eddie in his youth, they would predict that he'd be dead. On the outside, people looking in said, hey, this is the man. Everybody knew Eddie. At any given moment, he could have seven to eight women that are running around the club looking for him. I have to get out of this totally. Right near the end, there was, there was just a void. It was a constant struggle. His inner soul was broken at that moment. There was that emptiness in his eyes. It was a bigger emptiness that I think I've ever really seen in his eyes. I'm running here, running there, but mainly I'm running the wrong way. It was Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde, and he was struggling with that, but the effort was there. There was a conscious effort to make that switch. He actually started talking behind his back, look at him, he's starting to be a good guy. And this was the reality. It was death. Betty's concept was you know, he wanted to start showing Islam and spread it to the non-Muslims. Well, people didn't know who I was. Like, well, why are we doing this? No one's going to take you serious. And you're living a dream. And people were, were just stubbornly resistant. And I you know, started looking at you like you're you know, from outer space. I had to be out there and trying to convince people to be on the show. Of that uh, show aired, I think that's when you saw the full formation come into to hope. This guy's changed. What's going on here? He's, he's a machine, you know. To see someone change, to see their character changes, to see positive changes in their life, it's a sign uh, of God. Back here on the Dean Show, from lead singer in a punk rock band to peace and purpose, living the way the Creator wants you to live, and at the end, nothing less than paradise, avoiding the hellfire. And this is something that all the messengers of God, they brought and taught. They gave yeah. the good news, didn't they? Obey God and you're going to get Jannah, paradise. Disobey God, live according to your whims and desires and your fancies, you're going yeah. to go to hellfire on the day of judgment. Yeah. And now, Islam provided all the rational, logical evidence. Before we get into that, tell us now, suicide. If these people have all the money, Whitney Houston, yeah, when you Many of these people continue. You mentioned the person that was dear yeah. to you. Uh, what's his name? Nirvana? Uh, Kurt Cobain. Kurt Cobain. What Nirvana. happened there? I got yeah. all the money, fame, yeah, women. Yeah, he had money, fame. And he wasn't doing something. Look, that's the thing. He wasn't doing He wasn't doing this unfulfilling music. He wasn't a pop star. Yeah. He was a, a grunge rock musician. Like he was, making the, he was playing the music that he wanted to play. Mm -hmm. And he still committed suicide. You can't that void there. Yeah, you can't, you can't fill it. Only and turn into the nothing, creator. nothing, nothing, nothing will fill that void except submitting to the one who created you. That's the void you had? Yeah, that's the void I had. Is it still there? Alhamdulillah, that void is not there anymore. It's not there. Alhamdulillah. How, Alhamdulillah. Could, how could, I mean, I'm sure, look, that 17 year old, 16, year, you're an adult now, right? Yeah. You're accountable at, yeah. in Islam at what age now? Puberty? Yeah. You're, you're an adult. Uh -huh. You have to make these decisions. Yep. So for those young adults that are out there and they're just, their minds are warped with music. They wake up to it. They go to sleep to it. Yeah. You know, marijuana, drugs, drinking, fitting in. They can relate now. You know, yeah. you speak the the, the language of yeah. the times. Yeah. You're living that. Yeah. What advice do you have for them? Look, um, one of the things that I often talk about is being real. 
and opening your eyes and thinking about the big questions. And that's one of the issues I think with being young, we tend to ignore the big questions. Right? We don't want to think about death. We don't want to think about the fact that this may be our last moment to live. I may not make it home today. This may be my last interview. Right? This may be your last interview. That's the reality of life. Even a non-Muslim won't deny the fact that he doesn't know when he's going to die. Even an atheist, somebody who rejects God doesn't deny that fact. Those are the big questions. And our Islam, the Prophet encouraged us to think about those big questions. He said, المود. He said, increase in remembering the destroyer of desires, death. Mm -hmm. Right? That's the big question. So if we think about those things, it'll bring us back to reality. Right? I don't think, I don't think young kids deny the fact that we're going to die. They just don't think about it. Right? They don't. They don't. Yeah, yeah, they don't think about it. So the idea is, you know, bringing that, bringing the, the real questions, you know, asking yourself the real questions. And that's what did it for me. Now, tell us, before people have to go all the way around the world and accumulate all these bad deeds, you know, blacken their heart and all the trauma and everything, now, how can people be sure, how could they know that this way of life that we're talking about, Islam, submission to the will of God, is indeed from the Creator, is not man-made? Right. How can they be sure? What would you encourage them to do? Listen, the thing about Islam is, alhamdulillah, we don't have to do a lot of work, right? Tawheed is such a simple concept. How would you translate that? Pure monotheism? Pure, I would translate Tawheed as worshipping the one who created you and gave you life and can take your life away. Beautiful. Simple as that. Because He is the one who created us. He gave us life. He gives us sustenance. He provides for us. He's in charge of all affairs. He is the only one who deserves our worship and our devotion. That is Tawheed right there. It's so simple. Nothing in create, not Jesus, exactly. not Muhammad, I mean, not praying to them. Of course. They were messengers of, of God. Of course. And that's one thing, SubhanAllah. I remember now when thinking about Christianity and Islam and those things, I was like, my fitrah told me, I said, why Jesus? Like, why do I have to go through somebody to get to God? Right? If God cares, if He's the one who created me, why do I need people? Why do I need intercessors? Right? And it's unfortunate that in this day and age we have Muslims that go to intercessors. Right? Yeah. When we have, alhamdulillah, we have a pure religion. No intercessors. No intercessors. No middleman, no, no secretary. Exactly. Only God. Only Allah Azza wa And this is a power that a Muslim has to have a connection with their Lord. Right? Other, alhamdulillah, a Muslim knows this. And this is why when we go into sajda, we know we're close to Allah Azza wa And we call out sincerely to Allah Azza wa So can it, before we cut out, can we say that's the start? Right now, you're at home watching this. Yeah. And you know there's a voice. Start asking the Creator alone for that's, guidance. Exactly. That's, that's one of the things I did actually. I, I sincerely, I said, God, if you're out there, guide me. Guide me. Just guide me. And, and it, wasn't, it wasn't a matter of... Anything. I just purely wanted to, I had that voice, I was like, just show me what the truth is. And if you put down those barriers, right, I don't care what your religion is, if you're, you're a Jew or a Christian, uh, atheist, if you're a Muslim who doesn't practice, you put down all your preconceived notions, all your barriers, you put them down, and you sincerely make dua to Allah, to God, and say, oh God, guide me to the truth, Allah will never leave you He'll hanging. facilitate a way. He will make a way. Simple as that. Yeah. We're out of time. Tell us, you have a special class that you yeah, hold. Yeah, I'm teaching a, a class for Al Maghrib. It's called the Fiqh of Chilling. Uh, it's basically the Islamic perspective on entertainment and recreation. Okay. The point of this class is to find that balance in your life because obviously, as Muslims, we submit to Allah Azza wa Jal. Our goal is the hereafter. At the same time, we don't abandon the dunya altogether, right? As Muslims, our goal is to lead a balanced life, and in that balance we find comfort, right? We're a religion which is away from extremism, right? Extremism meaning going too far or not going far enough or not doing anything at all. So for example, uh, you, somebody who showers 20 times a day, that's extreme because he showers too much. Somebody who doesn't shower at all, that's the other extreme. Mm -hmm. The balance is in the middle. So the point of this class is to find that balance in your life in terms of entertainment and recreation. So you, so you lead a fulfilled life. At the same time, you don't feel like, oh, I'm Muslim, so everything's haram now. Yeah. You know, to find that balance in your life. People can look you up at where? Yeah, I'm on Facebook, Saad Taslim. I'm on Twitter, at Saad Taslim. Look me up, and uh, yeah. May God Almighty, the Creator of the heavens and the earth, and everything we say, Allah, Jesus said, Allah, ha, that's the one <laughs> God. May He reward you, thank you. Jazakallah keep khair. you steadfast. Jazakallah khair. We are. See you next time. Inshallah. Inshallah. Assalamu alaikum. And there you have it, another person's story who was living this life the wrong way. And then he came to the right way, which was based on proof and evidences, filling the void that was in his heart that was missing. It was missing. And Islam provided him with that peace, that contentment, that satisfaction. 
Jesus brought Islam, Moses brought Islam, Muhammad the last and final messenger, he brought Islam, submission to the will of God, not to your fancies, your desires, not worshiping a man, a monkey, an elephant, nothing in creation, but worshiping the one creator. And we have the living miracle today, the verbatim word of God, the Quran, you can pick it up for free, 1-800-662-ISLAM, and start asking, start asking, because you know money can't buy happiness, nothing in this world can fill that void except you turning to the creator and him guiding you. So ask for the guidance, ask for the guidance, and when you get it, you will see that your whole life will turn around and you'll truly be happy. You truly have success. And at the end, when you die, you'll have paradise. That's right. And you'll avoid the hellfire. We'll see you next time. Peace be unto you.